What is the difference between cotton and cellulose watercolor paper on practice? Which type of paper to choose and for which purposes? Today we'll see how pigments behave on arches cold, hot and rough pressed 300 gram per square meter 100% cotton, Fabiana's 300 grams per square meter 25% cotton, and Van Gogh pure cellulose black 300% grams per square meter watercolor paper. I'm using in most cases 300 grams per square meter because it's like a golden middle among the watercolor paper densities. Lower density has a risk not being able to cope with the amount of water planned for the painting. Higher density is more expensive but brings not that much difference compared to 300 grams per square meter. Hi guys, welcome to my channel, my name is Anastasia and I am a watercolor enthusiast. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel and let's learn watercolors together. Ok, so what's the difference? First of all, cellulose watercolor paper can hold much less water without going wavy too much. If you plan big washes, you need to tape your paper to some surface, so when it's dry, it'll be a bit flatter, but in fact it doesn't help that much. About drying time. From my experience, cellulose paper dries about twice quicker than cotton paper. You start providing some areas of your picture and when you're done, the starting point is already dry. It of course depends on the humidity and temperature of the place you are. I'm shooting this video in Czech Republic, and for me it's kind of a problem, but not a kind of a problem which I couldn't deal with. In terms of glazing, usually advanced watercolor paints consist of three layers. Base layer, definition layer and accent layer. Cellulose paper won't let you do a wet on wet second, definition layer. Here is a good chance of unplanned lifting colors and or muddy colors when you're trying to glaze different color on the top of already glazed base colors. Wet and dry technique works fine. And the last thing which is extremely annoying about cellulose paper is that when the watercolors dry out on cellulose paper, some part of pigments move to the edge of wet zone creating a border between the part which was wet and the one which was not. And since cellulose paper dries quickly, this border quite often happens to be inside of the area which initially was wet. If you notice it before it's completely dried, it can be fixed more or less. Once dried, fixing attempts lead to unplanned lifting colors and overworking the paper. 100% cotton watercolor paper doesn't have problems listed before. Once dried, it won't look like a dried autumn leaf. It will be a bit wavy, but not extremely. It stays wet enough time to work wet on wet comfortably. It allows glazing wet on wet a reasonable amount of times, and here the quality of watercolors come in place, but 100% cotton paper allows you to produce smooth transitions without visible pigment borders. That's why it's much more expensive. It makes artists' lives easier. In terms of texture of 100% cotton paper, there are three types of texture – cold pressed, hot pressed and rough. And the smoothest paper, almost without roughness, is a hot pressed type. It's good for very detailed paintings with thin lines. Middle roughness goes to the cold pressed paper. It's the most popular type of watercolor paper because on the one hand you still can draw detailed paintings and on the other hand it has a very nice texture which you expect to see on watercolor paintings. Rough watercolor paper has the strongest texture. It's hard to draw small details on this paper, but for example landscapes could get an interesting mood once painted on it. As a conclusion, 100% cotton paper, I would recommend to start from 300 grams per square meter cold pressed, is highly recommended even for beginners, of course if you have a budget for it. If not, you can go with some cotton percentage, like 50%, 25% cotton, etc. Because you need kinda different skills to paint on 100% cotton paper and cellulose paper. Working with cellulose paper is much harder. Paint spreads on cellulose paper not as beautifully as on cotton paper. As a beginner trying to follow tutorials of pro artists but not getting the same paint behavior as on videos, you could even think that you are not talented enough and can't learn to draw, but in fact you just choose the wrong paper. On the other hand, cellulose paper could work fine with non-realistic illustrations where you need one, maximum two layers wet and dry. That's all for today, guys. I hope this video helped you to figure out the differences between types of watercolor paper and now you feel a bit more comfortable for making a choice. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below and see you in the next videos. Bye!